Hi everybody, Chris Bryant here. Huge news regarding the CCNA exam. It is changing in 2016. The current exam is being phased out, or exams, whether you're on the one exam or two exam path. And in this video, it's going to be a little longer than the usual three to five minute video boot camp because we're going to go over everything you need to know, including the deadlines, the differences between the exams. I've got a timing tip here for you, a couple other things you ought to know. And there's a bit of a loophole in the way the um, the deadlines are set up because in the past Cisco has always had you know the one exam and the two exam path they've always they've usually ended on the same day you know they have the same last day to test this time they don't and if you take the two exam path as you'll see in a moment you may get a little more time to get your CCNA finished up so let's take a look at that now the current exams are going to be phased out in August and September of 2016 now, if you're taking the one exam path, that's the CCNA 200-120 exam, the last day to test is August 20, 2016. A strong hint here for you, and this is that timing tip I promised you, do not wait until August 19 to register. I hear this every time there's a CCNA rollover. Well, I went out to register and they didn't have any seats left. And I, when did you go out there? The day before I wanted, the day before the deadline. Um, don't do that. It, you're much better off setting a deadline now for yourself anyway, this being May 23rd when I'm recording this, but whenever you're getting started, go ahead and sign up for your seat now. And then you've got that taken care of. There's no anxiety about wondering if you're going to be able to get a seat at your favorite testing center. That also goes for those of you on the two exam path. And here are the deadlines for the current exams. Now, the ICND-1 exam, the deadline for that one is also August 20, 2016. Then, though, the ICND-2 deadline is September 24, 2016. So if you're taking the two-exam path, you actually have until September 24 to finish your path. You only have to get, of course, the ICND-1 done before August 20. So that's something to consider when you're looking at the one-exam versus two-exam path, because in the past I've always told students, you know, if you're familiar with networking, if you're comfortable with the fundamentals, go ahead and take the one exam. You can certainly still do that, but this extra time to finish the two exam path, it is worth considering. One quick commercial note here before we continue. With these deadlines, I guarantee that you'll earn your CCNA with my video boot camp before these deadlines hit. If you don't, I'm going to give you my all new CCNA 200-125 video boot camp, the video boot camp for the next exam version, absolutely free. You don't have to send me anything. You don't have to fax me anything. You don't have to give me a phone call. All you have to do is watch the new videos as they're posted because I'm going to put them in the same course on Udemy uh, as the current ones are. Plus, we're celebrating our 12th anniversary and, hallelujah, our new website this upcoming June. So right now, everybody who joins my CCNA Video Boot Camp gets my CCNA Security course absolutely free. You earn two important Cisco certifications for one low price. I know I don't have the price on the screen, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's less than 20 bucks for the entire thing. And that's permanent access. Everything's downloadable. It is yours. Also, with Udemy, uh, they have gotten rid of the couponing ridiculousness they were doing for a while there because everybody was just you know coupon hunting all the time, waiting for a sale. Here's the deal that I've arranged with them. With that link, bit.ly, bit.ly slash Udemy CCNA, that will always give you the guaranteed lowest price on my CCNA video boot camp. Guaranteed, I promise. Now, here are those new exam numbers, by the way. Not uh, terribly important, but the one exam path, as I mentioned a moment ago, C CCNA 200-125, and the numbers for the new exams in ICND, 1, 100-105, and ICND 2, 200-105. Now, here's the number one rule of CCNA exam changes. I know if this is the first time you've gone through this, there's some anxiety. Oh, no, the exam's changed. What's going to be on the new one? And we are going to talk about that. What's on the new one? Should I try to hurry up and get this done? You know, should I just wait? Well, that's the thing. And I've already seen a very well-meaning person tell somebody else that on my Facebook page. Well, you know, just wait for the new books in September. No. Do not let the changes affect your studies. Don't postpone, don't delay, keep studying. And here's why. It's, uh, I don't want to say a dirty little secret, because it's not dirty, it's, and really it's not a secret, it's right out in front of everybody. But this is what people forget, or don't realize, I just say. The topics simply don't change much from one CCNA exam version to another. Switching, it's not going anywhere. Routing fundamentals, still there. Network fundamentals, still there. OSPF and EIGRP, they're still there. 
shoot, that's 50, 60% of the exam right there. I mean, that's a lot of it. In my humble opinion, and I've been taking the CCNA and teaching the CCNA really for almost 15, 20 years now, the CCNA exam stays about 95% the same from one version to the next. And like I said, I've gone through four or five of these changes. And the one thing I really want to point out to you here is the technologies themselves do not start working differently when the CCNA exam changes. Everything we just looked on that screen, switching, routing fundamentals, network fundamentals, OSPF, EI, GRP, they all work the same. So if something happens, you know, and you don't beat the deadlines, you know, real life interferes sometimes. Well, the study time you put in is not wasted. You're actually ahead of the game because then all you got to do is go to the new exam material and say, okay, I already know all this other stuff. I already studied that. Now I just need to study a little bit on the new material and you're gold. I mean, you're in. So really the worst thing you can do for yourself is to let your mind play a little trick on you and say, okay, I'll just wait till September or October and then I'll study the new stuff. Don't do that. Don't do that. Keep grinding. So you're saying, okay, that's all great. I hear you, Chris, but what is new on the 200-125 exam? I am glad you asked. And here are the main new topics. And uh, Cisco just put out a PDF with a complete outline for the 200-125 CCNA exam, and I spent the weekend combing that thing. And again, I would say 95% of the exam topics unchanged. But here are some additions you should be aware of. Uh, cloud resources and anything you see on this screen in the next, by the way, in quotation marks, is straight from that Cisco PDF. Uh, they're talking about traffic path to internal and external cloud services, virtual services, and basic virtual network infrastructure. So that's getting more and more important, so I'm glad to see them adding that to the CCNA. There seem to be a little more emphasis on troubleshooting approaches and methodologies. It's not that you haven't seen that on previous CCNA exams, but I think they're putting a little more emphasis on that. And I'm quite glad to see them finally adding Layer 3 Ether channels. Now, Layer 2 Ether channels, they've been on the CCNA since the dawn of time, but Layer 3 Ether channels where you're actually putting IP addresses on the Ether channels, uh, it's pretty cool stuff, and I'm glad they're adding that to the CCNA exam. Uh, in their words, when it comes to WAN access connectivity options, MPLS, Metro Ethernet, Broadband PPP over E, and, over Ethernet, I should say, and Internet VPN. They have added some quality of service, which I'm really glad to see, because it seemed like they kind of de-emphasized that on the last CCNA exam, but QoS is so important when it comes to voice and video traffic. For those of you not familiar with that term, if you get just getting started with your studies, we're talking about really a way to prioritize traffic, and that is more and more important in today's networks. Also, BGP, this is probably the biggest change, and it's the fundamentals of BGP. Uh, that's always been a CCNP route topic in the past. It's always been a CCNP topic, period. Um, so they're moving some of that to the CCNA to get you used to it. It's, it's a different world than OSPF and EIGRP. It takes a little getting used to, but certainly you can handle it. But that's probably the biggest change I saw is that a little BGP is showing up on the CCNA exam now. But look at what's still around. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm not going to um, read you the entire list, but you get the idea here. We've got switching, network topologies, ARP, NAT, network security, tons of STP and STP features. So, you know, the moral of the story is don't stop studying because these technologies are not going anywhere. And the thing is, when you start sooner, the sooner you start, the sooner you get the job done and you don't want to interrupt your studies. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll have a few more on YouTube to keep you up to date on anything else that comes up as far as the CCNA exam change goes. And if you have any questions, come out and see me on Twitter at CCIE12933. Same with Facebook, Google+, and our website launching in June 2016. We're going to have tons of free material uh, on there over the next few months to help launch that website and to help you get CCNA certified and beyond. So again, thanks for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, and all the best in your CCNA studies.